after the collapse of the Roman Empire in AD 410. Its soldiers occupying Britain pulled out. Their withdrawal created a power vacuum. And as word spread across Europe, a number of barbarian tribes made the treacherous sea journey across the English Channel to claim their piece of the island. For years, the competing tribes battled for supremacy until one, the Anglo-Saxons, emerged victorious. In the new British kingdom they established, their culture and religious beliefs prevailed. They believed in a large group of gods who all had power. And they also seemed to have believed that you needed to be buried with things to take with you to the afterlife. In 1939, Archaeologists unearthed Anglo-Saxon burial mounds in the town of Sutton Hoo. One of the graves contained the remains of a warrior next to the remnants of a ship. The discovery shed vivid new light on the militaristic culture he inhabited. They saw not just a warrior of great renown, but a warrior of great renown whose entire accoutrement was still there. In fact, the rivets from the boat were still there so they could actually see how large the boat was that he had been buried in. Sutton Hoo yielded many weapons containing Iron Age medals. Gold wire decorated the warrior's sword. Bronze panels coated with tin lined his steel helmet. And an iron boss used to protect his hand capped his spectacular shield, all proof of his culture's mastery of metallurgy. When the Anglo-Saxons weren't duking it out on the battlefield, they lived in small villages scattered across England. In the center of each village was the Mead Hall, an oblong structure where the lord of the tribe conducted business and tipped a few flagons. Members of a reenactment group called Regia Anglorum have resurrected this bygone institution of Anglo-Saxon culture. Behind me is a reconstruction of an Anglo-Saxon Mead Hall. An Anglo-Saxon mead hall is a place where the Lord gathers his taxes, entertains guests, and in defensive crisis, gathers his troops either to attack or to defend. Mead was a honey-sweetened alcoholic beverage that the Saxons drank to break the chill of the harsh English winters. It filled every cup during their pre-war rituals. The drinking in the mead hall, the men drank together and swore pledges to each other that when the time came and the enemy came against them with spear and with shield, with point and edge, that they would be able to stand together in the shield war and fight together. The men that drank together fought together because they had said they would. After the drinking came the call to arms. On the walls, the weapons of the Lord and his warriors. We have the lightweight throwing javelin discharged at the enemy. The fighting spear with its sharp edge and point used over arm in conjunction with a shield. The fighting spear had been a battlefield mainstay in Britain since the Celts first thumbed their noses at the Romans. You could always count on it to make its point. Now to kill him from here, I probably look to get a spear into him as hard as I can, just keep going at him. I put a shield down, protect my body. After all, he is a trained killer and could cause me all sorts of mischief. And then a few thrusts to his face. Perhaps even after that, a quick smash with the shield as I move on to continue the fight. One difference between the Anglo-Saxon spears and earlier models was its spear point. Saxon metal workers crafted it to inflict deeper and deadlier wounds. If you look at this wonderfully made spear point, we recognize it's thinner at the point, it's even still sharp to a certain extent. This will penetrate the body and penetrate quite far into the body, to the point where it probably won't go through, but will get stuck there. The individual is probably having to pull with all his might to get it out of the body as the flesh comes around this and circles around the smaller socket. The most distinctive Saxon weapon was a single-edged knife called the sea axe. The CX, or knife, the weapon for which the Saxons were named. A utility weapon, a general purpose weapon, a weapon of war. The Anglo-Saxons repelled every invader that dared to challenge them. Eventually, their pagan culture fell. 
not at the point of an enemy's sword, but as Christianity transformed Britain starting in the seventh century. Still, their legacy endures in the form of the international language they left behind. They were pretty good at what they did as far as weapons were concerned. Here we all are, we speak English. Uh, what better indication do you need of the fact that they were successful? 